hello and welcome back. So, first of all, I just want to say thank you to Stoneacre Doncaster Ford for lending me this car. I've had this car now for the last week. It's a 2018 Ford EcoSport with the one litre three-cylinder EcoBoost engine. Um, and this one is the, the 125 horsepower model. And yeah, I'd never even heard of this car until I jumped in this one. I've never owned one, I've never bought one to sell. Um, they started making them in 2014. This is a 2018 model, um, which is the facelifted version. So yeah, I've never owned an EcoSport before. Not that I own this one, I've been lent this one. So yeah, I didn't know much about the EcoSport. Um, I've had several Cougars, which I quite like. I think the styling's very good. I rented a Ford Edge a couple of years ago when I was in California. Um, and that was really good. I was really impressed with that car. You don't see many of those on the um, on the roads over here, but over there they're quite quite common. Of Ford's range, the the Cougar and the Edge. This is the smallest crossover SUV that they make. It's based on the Ford Fiesta, which is one of the UK's most popular and best-selling cars. So you'd think it would be quite good, wouldn't you? Well, it's a bit of a mixed bag. First of all, the elephant in the room is the appearance. It's not very pretty, is it? I think we can all agree on that. The front looks fine. This is the facelifted version, so it's slightly better than the previous model. Um, the side looks fine, or the, f the front half of the side. But the back end just looks so awkward. It's quite a tall car, and the back end is sort of short and stumpy. It just doesn't look right at all. It is quite an ugly, awkward looking car. I stood in the rain the other night trying to get in the boot for the first time. Rather than the latch being in the centre, as you'd imagine, it's built into the rear light on the right-hand side. And yet it opens like a, like a barn door, which isn't very practical. And it means that if you're in a car park and somebody's parked, you know, behind you, then you can only open it three inches. So it's not very practical. While we're on the subject of the rear end, a lot of EcoSports have a spare wheel mounted to the back door, as if it's 1998. 20 years ago, all four-wheel drives and SUVs had a spare wheel mounted to the back door. But in 2018, it just looks really, really old-fashioned and outdated. Because it's not practical, it's not a practical idea. And when you mount a spare wheel to the back door, you lose a load of visibility on the back. And it just looks awkward. And also the boot space is quite poor. With three bags of shopping in there, it's full. It doesn't make any sense because they've, they've obviously made this car. Well, if you think about who's gonna buy this car, it'll be a young family, I guess. So they're gonna to need to get a pram in the back and it won't fit one. So what's the point? I think the design team at Ford must have forgotten what SUV stands for, unless they thought that the U stood for useless. Having said that, if you look at its rivals, the Renault Capture and the, the, the Nissan Duke, their boots don't offer a very big space either so but it is pointless when you think about who's gonna buy it now although it's got 125 horsepower which sounds like enough for a small car it doesn't produce much torque so it's not as exciting to drive as you'd have perhaps hoped for now you can also personalize the color scheme of this so you can have the roof and half the sides a different color and Ford aren't the only manufacturers to do this. Loads of people are doing that these days. And on a, on a Fiat 500 or a Mini, it kind of works. But on something this size, I just feel like it's a bit patronizing. Ford must think that you're quite dumb to fall for what is basically a really ugly car, just because you can have a brightly colored roof. It's as if Ford have said, I know, we've got an ugly car here. Let's distract our customers with a bright orange roof. And that's an indication of what Ford must think of their customers. Because if anything, it just looks worse. Now, the next thing I don't like is its name. EcoSport. It sounds like, it sounds like the name of an engine, like EcoBoost or Blue Efficiency or EcoFlex or VTEC doesn't sound like a name and again when you think of the the size of the Ford company you're telling me that there's nobody there that could have thought of a better name than EcoSport can you imagine the other ideas that they came up with at that brainstorm session 
if EcoSport was the best one. <laughs> and it's a lie, because it's, it's not sporty and it's not really eco-friendly. Ford claimed that it'll do 45 miles per gallon, and I've used this for the last week and I've averaged 39.7. So it's not bad on fuel, but I wouldn't describe it as eco, and it's certainly not sporty. So now I've got the negatives out of the way, the rest of the car is pretty good. I've been quite impressed with it over the last week. This is the ST line. Uh, they do like the, the basic ZTEC model, then the ST line, which is supposed to be a bit, a bit sportier. You get the, uh, a chunkier steering wheel with a red stitch in. You get red stitching everywhere. You get half leather. Now, other reviews that I've read um, have said that the ST line has a, a firm ride, and I don't think it does at all. I think it's more than acceptable. It's quite a comfortable car to drive, actually. I've done several hundred miles in this now over the last week. I think it's perfectly fine. I quite like the high driving position and the visibility is excellent. Feels like I'm sat in a fish tank actually. And also the other thing that I've been impressed with is the interior quality. It's really good actually. It's been finished to quite a high standard. I like the infotainment system that, that just sits on the dash like it looks like somebody's bolted an iPad on there which is similar to new Mercedes, and I quite like that. Also, the quality of that is excellent. If you compare that to the, the Subaru XV that I was in a few weeks ago, um, that I had as a, as a hire car, that was terrible. That felt like it was 10 years out of date, whereas this feels brand new, as it should. You've also got Apple CarPlay, which is excellent. Now I've got used to it, I don't want to give it up. The reverse camera is excellent, the quality is really good. And yeah, everything you touch in it feels like it's been put together well. The materials don't feel cheap. One little slight criticism, to turn on the back wipers, you touch this little button here on the side of the uh, wiper stalk, but there's almost no resistance there, so you find yourself knocking it by accident as you turn the steering wheel. That's only a small criticism. The audio system isn't the best either. If you turn the bass up a little bit and turn the volume up, you can hear the, uh, the speakers kind of vibrating. It's not very good. But you can spec, for an extra £300, you can spec the, uh, the premium audio system, which I would do. Otherwise, it'll just irritate you. Like this jumper's doing, actually. It handles pretty well, too. For a tall car, you'd expect there to be a bit of body roll. And there isn't, really. There isn't much at all. It handles quite sharp. The steering's quite sharp and precise. I've been impressed with that. Be prepared to change gear all the time though. I've got a six speed manual gearbox and the one litre three cylinder engine um, isn't a very torquey engine. So, and I guess it's quite a heavy car this with it being tall and large. So you do find yourself changing gear all the time because the engine runs out of steam quite quickly. It, yeah, it's not a quick car at all, as you'd expect, but for round town it's perfectly adequate, which is all you can hope for really, because like I say, the competition, the Peugeot 2008, which I don't really like, or the Renault Captur, which I do like actually, that has a, a 1.2 litre three-cylinder engine. So it's about the same sort of um, performance as this. Now, they do do this in an automatic as well, but I try and avoid that because I imagine it's even lazier than this one. Now, they launched this model in 2014 and the early ones were made in India for the first three or four years. Now they've moved production to Romania. Um, and yet it's too new to, to comment on how reliable it will be. Although I should point out, I've got some trim loose on the back door, which for a six month old car, shouldn't happen really should it now you can pick up early examples for about six grand they do a diesel as well which is very cheap to run but a bit more expensive to buy initially um, and yeah unless well like any diesels really unless you're doing a lot of miles I wouldn't recommend one you're better off with the petrol and the majority of the people that will buy one of these are just going to use it around town and doing the school run and things like that so you don't really need the diesel you don't want its DPF clogging up and things like that so yeah, for about six grand, you'll get a 2014 with 70 or 80 on the clock. Now, another thing to mention, I've heard from our warranty rep, they've had several cases recently of engine failure on this one litre unit. 
Now I think on the little Fiesta, a one litre three cylinder should last the, the vehicle's lifetime. But Ford also sell the C-Max and the Mondeo with this three litre, uh, three litre, three cylinder, one litre unit. So you can imagine when an eight year old Mondeo gets to 100,000 miles and that one litre engine's been pulling a big heavy car, it's just gonna burn out, isn't it? And that's what I'm hearing from the warranty company. They've had several recently over the last few weeks where they've just burnt out and they've had to replace the engine. So bear that in mind if you're buying a high mileage one. I mean, if you're buying a low mileage one with, with service history, you'll be fine. But it's a bit too much to ask from a little three-cylinder engine, isn't it? To pull a big heavy Mondeo for eight years. No wonder the early ones are starting to give up. Now, prices for new ones start at £17,000 and they go all the way up to £25,000 for a top spec. <clears throat> so, they're not cheap really, are they? I think the Renault Capture is slightly cheaper than that new. And to be honest, although I can't follow the driver this one, I'd probably pick the Captur, just because I prefer the looks of it. It's quite amazing really that Ford have managed to get 125 horsepower from a three-cylinder, one-litre unit. They do one as well that's, that produces 140 horsepower. So it is quite impressive. And road tax is cheap as well because it's a, a low, low polluting engine. Now everybody makes a small crossover vehicle. So you've got loads of choice. The Nissan Juke's probably the most, most popular and most common, but <laughs> it just looks hideous, doesn't it? But I wouldn't discount the EcoSport either because even though it does have a stupid name and a stupid rear end, it's quite a good car. Yeah, if you're looking for one, I would recommend the ST line or the titanium spec. I wouldn't want to drive the Z-Tech because you'd want really as many options as possible, wouldn't you? So thanks once again for watching. Any comments or questions, leave them below. Um, and yeah, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.